says, Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee. Neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And the reason this devotional really stood out to me is because this is one that I already did with the kids in children's church. And the devotional is focusing on the name of God. O Lord God. It says, How many times when we read that name, we understand the power and authority that is there within it? When we read it, we recognize who He is. But how many times when we speak the word God, we make it lose its power? It doesn't seem to mean as much to us as when we're recognizing who He is as we're studying His word. And it just thought about this. How many times
Yeah. Hey.
never ever experienced, amen. And you, you can be saved, praise God. You can be on your way to heaven, amen. Praise God. And still not just really feel that freedom. That freedom just to worship. That freedom just to just to let God be God, amen, in your life. And I think there's there's a lot of things that, that seems to to shape or to mold that and or, or, or to be able to to help you or to assist you in, in being free in your worship and being free in your praise, amen. And and one thing that that, that this song this really speaks to me, it's always spoke to me. Amen. But it, it's one thing when it's sung with about 3,500 uh, middle school students, uh, praise God, in the Coliseum. And, and, it, and, and it's just amazing the atmosphere uh, of everything that begins to change and, and how things are broken and things begin to shift. And, and the freedom, praise God, that this song talks about is there for you to worship. Uh, and, and, and that's what we're after, amen. We're after that freedom to worship. Just to let go and to let God. Amen. And so this is all I want us to do. As we sing this song one more time through, what I'd like to do is sing this song. And then everybody that can, amen, that's physically able, amen, if you can. All I want you to do, you can, you can remain seated if you want to stand. And, and as the song says, give your all to Jesus. Amen. It's up to you. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But all I want to ask you to do is if you can lift up one hand and you can lift up both hands. As we sing this song and just, and just ask God for that freedom. And just sing this song with us and, and just, just receive, just receive of the freedom, amen, that God wants to give you, amen. I promise you, there's such a freedom in worship. There's such a freedom in worship, praise God. I can promise you that there is. So if you don't care, Brother George, go ahead, sing this again, if you will, amen. Praise God, just reach up, amen, and begin to sing and begin to rejoice in our Yes,
verse 6 says, He that saith, He abideth in him, on himself also, so to walk, even as he walked. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. You pray for me tonight as I pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, I, I, just, I just want to take a moment right now and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, I thank you for touching lives in this service tonight. Lord, I'm thankful for the people that, that have come forward, the people that have received of you tonight. I'm thankful for the worship. God, I'm thankful for everybody that has stepped in when people have been sick, when people have been afflicted. And, and, and Father God, and I'm so thankful for that. God, I'm thankful that you're working in people's lives. And Lord, you are drawing people. God, I see it. I see you, I see you drawing people, Lord God, into your presence. I see you moving and working in our atmosphere and in our midst and homes and in families. And Lord, I say thank you. I say thank you, Holy Spirit. I say thank you. Lord, I, I'm, so, I'm just so blessed tonight, Lord. I look around and I see all the hurt, the pain, and the suffering. But I look here tonight, God, and I see the joy of the Lord. Lord, let us take the joy of the Lord out into the streets tomorrow. And let us be witnesses and soul winners. And let us, Lord God, and show others the goodness of our God. I pray tonight now as we get ready for this word, use me as your vessel. Anoint me to speak this word with truth, with boldness, with power, and with authority. Give us eyes to see, give us ears to hear what the Spirit would speak tonight. Father, forgive us when we fail you and come short. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Looking at this scripture, there was a few things, and I began to point out some of it this past Wednesday night, but I want to go uh, just a little bit further and, and look at it just a little bit deeper, focusing only on verse 6, because Wednesday night I backed up actually and started in, in chapter 2, verse 1, and began to read, and, and, and we talked about the walking and knowing him and following his commandments. He says, if you if you know me, he says, you're going to follow my commandments and so forth and so on, but, but I want to look specifically at, at verse 6, because he says, if you say, this is Philip's unauthorized translation, and that you abide in him, that means that if I profess Jesus Christ as my Savior, if I profess Christianity, if I say that I am a Christian, then I should walk Christ-like. Okay, this, this is what he's saying here, okay? This is what I want to make sure that we understand. And so, so in doing this, amen, I want us to make sure that we, that we have this understanding. And I think that everybody in here, amen, has this understanding. Uh, but, but it's something that we're going to have an opportunity, praise God. I believe that with all of my heart, we're going to have the opportunity between now and sometime. And you say, well, that's, that's ridiculous because that's going to happen. Yes, it's going to happen. That's why I say it's almost certain that it's going to happen. Between now and Jesus comes, you're going to have an opportunity to share this word with somebody. You're going to have an opportunity on your job, at Walmart, in your family, but you're going to be able to share this with somebody and say, hey, man, I need to talk to you about something. Well, what do you need to talk to me about? Well, man, I'm telling you, I, you, you say you're a child of God, but you're, it's not lining up. It's not lining up. What you're professing and what you're walking is not lining up, and, and, and God said that it shouldn't be this way. Man, I love you, and, I, and I've been praying for you, and, and my heart's burdened for you, and I give this to you I love, but let's do this, let's pray, whatever. You're going to have an opportunity, amen, to talk to people about this. And then they're going to say, well, and you're going to start this whole conversation of, well, this, and who do you think you are, and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. Well, you're not going to have to say much, because guess what? You've been living it. And when you've been living it, there's not a lot that somebody else can say, amen. They can't say, well, you're not. Who do you think you are? You're no different than, than me. Amen. This is important. This is, this is what we've been talking about. This is what we talked about this morning. We're going to continue on with this. So, so if we look at the very first part, he that saith, he abide. We want to start with that word abide. That word abide in your Strong's Concordance, in your, in, in your, your chain reference, in your center column reference Bibles, that's going to take you back to John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, we find that that's where Jesus began to talk about the vine and the branches. And so now we have an understanding when he says, if you're going to abide, if he that saith he abideth, so now I'm saying that I'm abideth, well, 
what does it mean to abide? Well, now we go back to John chapter 15, and he begins to tell us what it means to abide. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you abide in me, amen, Philip's unauthorized translation says, you're going to live. That's what the word says. He says, if you abide in me, you're going to live. You can take a tree. Now, let's just, let's, I, I, I want to physically paint this picture for you. You can take a tree, and as the trunk, the trunk is going to be the vine. Let's just look at it this way for just a moment. The trunk is going to be the vine. And the branches are the, the branches. You catch on quick, praise God. I can take that tree, and I can trim every single branch off of that tree. And will that tree, or will that vine still survive?
Is that not what he did? It's what he did. He just said that if you abide in him, also our walk, how? As he walked. How did Jesus walk? This is pop quiz 101. How did Jesus walk? With his legs, right? Where y'all at? Come on. Amen? How did Jesus walk? Blameless and upright, amen. Everywhere that he went, he went about doing good, the Bible says. Everywhere that he went, amen. Did he stay away from the sinners? No. No, he went to them. The Bible says that he, that's why the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that's why the religious people hated him. Because he went and ate with the sinners. But did he become them? Did he, did, did, did he, did he agree with what they did? No. Nope. Amen. Did he say, well, it's okay. You just, you can keep doing what, it's okay. No. He went in, ate with them, became their friend, showed them, hey, there's a greater way. You don't have to live like this. Let me show you a better way. He didn't go in and say, bless God, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. Is that what he did? No, he walked in love. He walked in love and he showed them the example. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what do we do? Be example. We do the same thing. We walk in love and we be an example. We eat with these people. We don't. Where do we eat with these people at? Anybody. When was the last time somebody went to a restaurant? Huh? It's not been that long. We went, me and, me and family, we went Friday. So were there sinners at birds on Friday evening? There were lost people, I'm sure, at birds on Friday evening. Do you have an opportunity to minister to them? Yes. While you're there? Yes. Yes, you do. Amen. How can you do it? You can be of a lot of witness in any way that you choose to be. As long as you don't go from table to table and say, you sinned and you're going to hell, bless God. <laughs> Man, you ain't going to win nobody like that. You're not going to win souls like that, amen? Even though you might be speaking truth, you're not going to win nobody that way. Jesus said, if you profess to be a Christian, then walk as I walk. He says it's simple. I'm going to give us, I've got eight things right here that I want to cover real quick. i got five minutes to get it done in. Probably not going to happen, but I'll promise to have you out by at least nine. So just go with me on this. Thank you, brother. So, so what does it look like? Remember, we've talked about this, and I always say this. So we talk about church. We talk about these things, and, 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 and we cover these topics. But I'm that person that says, well, well you, you talk about it, but I want to see it. So I need you to tell me what it actually looks like. And that's what we always want to discuss. So what does it look like? What does the believer's walk look like? You say this is how, this is how you should walk. I didn't see Jesus walk. I read it in his word. Uh, so really, how am I supposed to live my life as a new convert, as a Christian, as a man and woman of God? How am I really supposed to live my life? Okay, thank you for asking. We're going to cover that. Number one, first thing that you're going to notice, there, there's going to be new life within you. That's number one. There's going to be a new life within you. The old man, I talked about this morning, the old man's going to die. The new man's resurrected in Christ Jesus through the Spirit of God. Amen. And now all the old things have passed away and all things have become new. You should experience a change in your life. Now, in that change in your life, guess what? Everything is not going to just magically, amen, change and get better for you. There are decisions that you have to make. I think that that's where people in the church have failed on so many levels. That somebody said, hey amen, your life is going to be new, hey amen. After you get saved, your life tomorrow, it's going to be so unbelievable for you. And then all of a sudden they wake up tomorrow and everything is the same. What do you mean everything's the same? My job's the same. I've still got the same old drag, boring, beat down, beat up, poor, pitiful, disgusting job that I had when I left on Friday. My bank account is still broke. My health is still poor. I mean, I'm just throwing some things out there. That these are the things that we got to think about because when we tell people you're going to have a new life, but then when they wake up tomorrow after they got saved and they still live in, amen, in the slums that they were living in before they got saved. So 
now what? Well, you see, it's, it's in the walk. Now it's when they're faced with that opportunity to speak good, all of a sudden it registers in here. Amen? And they have an opportunity through the Holy Spirit because now the Holy Spirit is within them and the Holy Spirit, the unction, is there to do what? Speak positive. To speak positivity, as this Tiffany said, and to speak good things over somebody's life. It's there. All of a sudden, I find myself watching the, the same thing that I was watching on Friday that I turned back to on Monday after I rededicated or got saved on Sunday. I flip over there on Monday, and I go to that same channel or that same movie that had that whatever, it, it was too sexual, or it had tons of cussing, whatever that it is, and some people, they got different opinions on us, so I'm not here to get into all that. We can, we can do that some other time. But anyway, I, I'm just going to say it's an ungodly movie. How's that? Amen. You was watching it on Friday, and you go back to watch it on Monday. And this time when you're watching it, all of a sudden while you're watching it, there's something that is within here that is speaking to you. And you get this feeling like, I shouldn't be watching this. Guess what that is? That's the new man. Mm -hmm. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, saying, you shouldn't be watching this anymore. Mm -hmm. That's where the change begins to happen. That's the movies, that's the, that's the, the TV, that's the radio. That's, that's life begins to change, and we have the choices to make those decisions to continue with that change. That's new life. Amen? That's what I'm talking about tonight. And we should see that as new converts and as believers. And that's why I say, if there has never been a change in our lives, amen, if there's no distinction, amen, from who you are now to who you used to be, knowing that you was hell being, praise God, straight up going to the devil's hell, amen, living in the bars and saloons and God knows whatever else, amen, fornication and everything else that the world offers. We talked about all those sins this morning. If you're still doing those same things, but yet you come to church and say, well, bless God, I'm saved. I am here to tell you, honey, you ain't saved. That's the bottom line, and this is what we're talking about tonight. Number two, I'm going to go on. Oh, i got to give you a scripture for that. Sorry. I'm sorry. Romans 6 and 4. I, I did give my man a copy of this tonight, amen, and I believe it's Charlie up there. Yeah. Praise God, I've been working this where Charlie went. I thought he done went AWOL and he done skipped out of here. I'm telling you, I asked him to do one thing and he left. I thought, oh God, I've run him off. <laughs> Praise God, he's upstairs helping. All right, so, so let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Thank you. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism in the dead. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. See, that's what we're talking about. We're going to walk in newness of life. Number two, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. That's where we're going next. So this next one, we're going to talk about faith. You're going to have faith. For you didn't have faith before as, 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 as a, a, a non-believer. Now, as a believer, I had faith to get saved. And now that same faith, amen, is going to continue to be evident in my life. I, it, it's going to go from my salvation period to now that it's going to grow. And I'm going to begin to pray for somebody. I'm going to begin to walk by faith. And by, well, what do you mean walking by faith? By I'm going to walk by this. I'm going to begin to walk by this book and not by, by what I see. And you're, you will see that as your new convert, amen, and as a believer. And even now, as we begin rededication, as we pray and we fast and God begins to speak to us and, and as we begin to shed off the things of this world that have gotten on us through this fasting and prayer time, this will begin to happen again. We will begin to see that we were walking a lot by sight. We didn't even realize it. And then we got to walk more by faith. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, you've got that. The third thing, go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. You're going to see an increase in spirituality. What do you mean by that? You're going to become more aware of the spiritual things and less of the physical or the fleshly things. You're going to be more spiritually minded than you are what? Fleshly minded or earthly minded. 
You're going to think more on the things of God than you will on the things of the world. This is something that we need to be looking for. And if this is something that we, if we put all these down as a checkbox, and as we go through it and we can check these off, if we come to one just like this one, we come to one and you say, well, you know what? You know, I, I might not be thinking about the Lord. I might not be spiritually minded as what I really think I am. And you need to write something out by that. That's something you need to go to the Lord in prayer about and say, Lord, I think I might be struggling right here and help me with this. And, and, and put it in your prayer wall or your prayer journal or whatever and begin to pray about that. And then get in the Word, amen, and then let God move. That's when we stand back and we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, to all these things. Yes, Lord, to you. Yes, Lord, move in my life. Galatians 5 and 16, this I say then, what do we got to do? Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill, we talked about that today, the lust of the flesh. Okay? It's very important. The next thing we're going to look at is consistency. This is a telltale sign. It's a telltale sign of what? It's a telltale sign of where you are in your relationship with the Lord. Okay? I, I'm just going to say, a lot of people don't want to hear it. That's okay. You can take it up with the author, amen, and not the male man, praise God. And, and so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Consistency. Consistency, I think of, I think of dependability. I think of routine. I think of, I think of all these things when I think of consistency. And if you want to go to um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. The first thing I think of on consistency is church attendance. How consistent are you with your church attendance? I think that is, I think that that is, that that's right here on the tip of the iceberg, and that's where a lot of people, you can find a lot of disagreements, and you can find a lot of controversy, and a lot of arguments over people that, that say, well, I love the Lord, but I'm going to come to church when I want to come to church. I, I'm going to come to church when it's convenient for me to come to church. And when you start talking about this, you know, it, it, it upsets people. Because now they feel that you're what? I'm judging them, or I'm talking about them, or, or I'm casting stones. You know, it's the first one, don't judge me. You know, the Bible says you judge not lest you be judged. And who do you think you are? You know, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. The last time I checked, I've been here for 24 years, honey. And I can about guarantee you I can probably count on my hands and my toes of the services I've missed in 24 years. Consistency. Are you saying that you're better than everybody else? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying this is where I gotta be. This I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know who saved me. I know who sanctified me. I know who filled me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I know who keeps me. And I know where my bread gets buttered at. Amen. And my bread gets buttered right here. This is where I find my strength, my hope, my peace, my joy. Everything that I am that goes on out there in this world, I get in here in my personal walk with Him. Amen? I'm just, I'm just speaking truth. I think of consistency. It's important. The second thing that I want to talk about on this and in your consistency is this. That in your consistency with your, your prayer life, your consistency of your Bible reading, your consistency of coming to church, your consistency of, 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 of giving, your consistency of participation, your consistency of, of doing all of these things, and then your consistency of your walk with Him. And this is where I want to, just, just a moment, I just want to just touch on this with just for a moment. How many of us failed Him? I'm going to throw up both hands. I failed Him, okay? As a new convert, you are liable to fail him more. Why? Because you're learning. And you're growing and you're changing and, and, and things are happening. A lot of things you don't understand and you're still learning about all this holiness and you're still learning about how to walk in the Word. You're still learning about all this and, you're, and, you're, and all these things are happening. And, and there might be an opportunity to where you're going to trip and fall more because you're what? As the Bible says, you're a, you're a child, you're a baby in Christ. Okay? And you're going to trip and fall. And what does that baby do when it trips and falls? Gets back up he and gets right back up and he just keeps going. Okay? And that's what we do. Amen? And then as we get older, amen, we get our balance and we get our bearings. And, and guess what happens? No more. Now we're not tripping and falling as much unless we got 
to the racers. Amen. Mm -hmm. And people that want to pull pranks on people and put slippery stuff on the floor or slip up behind you and do things. And then you find out you've been set up. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then you fall. So this is what we got to see. So we have to understand that as you get older, you should be falling less. That doesn't mean that you're not going to fall. That doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. You can be a 16-year seasoned saint, praise God, and fail tomorrow. Amen. Amen. If it can happen, it's going to happen. As long as we live in this world, we're going to be trying, and there's going to be some trials, and sometimes we're going to fail. There's going to be some temptations that we're going to succumb to. There's going to be some things that we're going to mess up on. There's going to be some times that we get ahead of God, as I put in that text yesterday. There's been times that I've been disobedient, and there's been times that I've been obedient in the last 24 years. And if the Lord allows me to live another 24 years, I'm sure there's going to be some times that I'm going to be disobedient as well as being obedient. Amen. But does that keep us from continuing on? No. Nope. No. Amen. This is where the consistency comes in. I'm hoping that you will fail less and less, and you will not be like a wave tossed to and fro in your faith. James talked about that as well. He said, don't be like the wave of the sea tossed to and fro. Mm -hmm. He said, but be steady. Be consistent. Amen? This is what we got to see. In Ephesians 4 and 1, he says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy, you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. We are called to be men and women of God. We are called to be world changers. We are called to be lights of this world. Shine your light to those around you. Number five, Ephesians 5 and 2. This next one, your walk should be more loving than it was before you got saved. You might have been the most loving person that ever walked the face of the planet before you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You might have been the most good heartedest the loving and kindness and gentlest person that there was that ever walked. Amen. Since Christ walked. But then when you got saved, it should have multiplied. Because now what you've been given is greater than what you had. And what you had was worldly. And now what you've been given is spiritual. You see what I'm saying? So it's important to know that. That no matter what we had before, amen, praise God, if we had love before, amen, that love should be multiplied and we should be able to love more and love greater than we ever loved before as a child of God. This is true. That comes out of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. So we walk in love. Is all of these things according to as Christ walked? Yes. All these things are according to as Christ walked. And as a matter of fact, on number four, Christ didn't fail. So I want to make sure to put that in there. He lived his life sinless. Number six, being cautious. Ephesians 5 and 15. When I say to you, you should be cautious, what do you think that means? How, how do you receive that? If I say, church, be cautious, be careful, what am I to be careful of or for? Laws of the distractions, what else, anything? And that pretty much sums it up, don't it? Temptations. He says to be cautious. See then that you walk circumspectly, that's that word, not as fools, but as wise. To be wise. To be wise in our walk. Amen. It's important, praise God, to be wise in our walk. To be cautious. That you should be spiritually aware. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and the, and the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you now. Amen. You're going to be more spiritually aware. Because now the Spirit of God lives within you. So now you should be more spiritually aware than you was before. Amen. Amen. This is, this, this is biblical truth. So now we see this. So now we understand this. So we are to be cautious of our surroundings. Cautious of, cautious of those that we have dealings with. There, there's a scripture that always used to trip me up. It used to always get me real good. And, and sometimes I still want to go back to it and look at it. And I, I read it because the Bible says lay hands suddenly on no man. Lay hands suddenly on no man. You got to be careful about that. Because I'm the type of person. I'm going to 
my hands on you. I'm going to find you. How you need prayer? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know? But, but what we have to understand is that there are demonic spirits that are out there that are baiting people. Mark my word when I'm telling you. They are using people to destroy you. I talked about this this morning. It's not a flesh and blood battle, church. It never has been, and it never will be. Understand that. It's not a flesh and blood battle. And you say, oh, God is greater, and God can destroy. Yes, absolutely. Have you ever seen or been around somebody that's been truly demonically possessed? Yep. Honey, it will change your walk. I can promise you it will change your walk. Mm -hmm. And if that person... Amen. Has an assignment. If that demonic spirit that has an assignment, amen, on your life, because I promise you, there are demonic spirits that want to kill you, that want to destroy you, that want to do harm to you. And you walk up to that person, that person could be lame, could be in a wheelchair, could be sick. And you all around, let me pray for you, bless God. You lay hands on that joker. And while you're praying, they're praying. And you didn't know it. But now, you walk away, and they something on you. And all of a sudden, it begins to affect you in ways that you didn't know anything about. It begins to play with this. And when it begins to play with this, it begins to play with these. And all of a sudden, things begin to change in your life. What happened? Something got on you that you didn't realize got on you. And now what it's going to take is a spiritual awakening to say, you know what, hey, something's different. So I've got something's going on. That spiritual awareness kicks in and says, wait a minute. And it might happen when you're in that prayer. It might happen when you're in that prayer and warn you. The Spirit of God can do that. Amen? It can happen. And then that's when we come together and we got to get in church and we say, hey, look here, wait a minute, whoa. I need the church to pray for me because something ain't right. And that's when you get the church together. We anoint with oil and we pray over you and we rebuke that demonic presence that's trying to come upon you. Amen? This is what I believe, praise God. We've got to be cautious. Amen? But I believe with all of my heart, amen, that God is greater. God is greater. Number seven, illumination. I think, amen, as a, 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 the believer's walk, it should be illuminated. What does that mean that it should be illuminated? What does that mean? Somebody should be able to see that I'm a child of God without me opening my mouth by how I live. It should be evident. Illumination, your walk will show others the way. Not only will they see that you're different, but because of who you are and your walk with Jesus, they're going to say, hey, there's something different about Jackie. I don't know what it is, but something's different about her now. She's changed. She ain't the same person she used to be. Something's different about her. I'm just going to sit back and watch her. She keeps it up. She keeps walking. She keeps living it. And all of a sudden, she goes through hard times and troubles and trials, and she holds to the faith. Other people see it, and all of a sudden, somebody comes and says, Hey, I've been, I've been watching. I've been going through some things, and I've been seeing that you differ. And I've got something going on in my home. And I, I, you've been telling me about your church. You've been, you've, been, you've been sharing scriptures and the word. And I'm going through something now, and, 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 and I don't know. I believe you pray. Now, I need you to pray with me. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for my family. Need you to pray for my great uncle, uh, twice removed, th three times on my father's side, and he's going through something. And I need you to pray, huh? Has it, I mean, that happens. People see it, amen. And we have to be illuminated. First John chapter one, verse seven. I should I should give you that a few minutes ago. I'm sorry. I'm bad about this. About to get to you beforehand. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. So right there, they're going to see that we are therefore different. Amen? We're going to be different. The last in this eight, number 8, I'm closing right here. I'm going to give you the scripture. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. We're going to go back to it. We started with it, we're going to end with it. 1 John 2 and 6. He that says he abideth in him himself also so to walk even as he walked. Our believer's 
walk should look like Christ. It should be Christ-like. There should be evidence of Christ-likeness in your walk. Okay? You might not be able. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm just going to throw this out there. If you made a checklist of everything that Christ did, and how he walked and how he lived, and you come up with ten points, you come up with five, you come up with six, every how many did you come up with? And you went down and you begin to check them off and said, check, check, check. You might not be able to check off all of them. Okay? If you can't check off all of them, that does not mean that you are not a child of God. Everybody hear me on that, right? Because we are doing what? We're growing from faith to faith. And as we grow, we understand, and as, as we get more of the Word in us, amen, because I can promise you, I was taught some things as a child that necessarily didn't line up with Scripture. And then when I got into Scripture, I began to find out that some of the things that I was doing and how I was behaving wasn't necessary, but even though it was okay, but then as I got in the Word, God began to show me, and I began to change my life because my life had to reflect the Word. And then I was able to put a check. And then, then I might have to go back the next day and erase it because that joker said something, I smarted off, and I had to repent. That wasn't Christ's life. You see what I'm saying? It's, the flesh is going to act out from time to time. Okay? And that don't mean that we're not saved. And that don't mean that we've lost our salvation. All right? So hear me tonight, church. Please hear me. Walk this walk according to this book. Walk this walk as close as you can to Jesus Christ. Stay in constant prayer. As Paul said, stay in season and out of season. Be instant in season and out of season. Pray without ceasing. If you do that and you are constantly in the Word and praying and asking God for help, asking God for guidance, asking God for direction, asking God to be the Lord of your life, to, 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 to be the throne of your heart, amen, to, to sit on the throne of your heart, all, if you're doing that and you're praying and you're walking with Him, amen, He's going to keep us, the Holy Spirit is going to keep us in check. And when we fail Him, and when, before we ever sometimes make that mistake, the Holy Spirit is going to quicken us. He, we're going to be able to bridle that tongue. Sometimes we might not. Sometimes we speak before it comes through the what? But before it comes through the filter process and it has a chance to go through the God filter. Amen. And then we've got to repent. But as we live for Him and as we go through those failures and as we get better and, and, and understanding those things, those times get less and less and less and less because now I'm able to bridle my tongue. Because I understand that Brother George is just another man like me. And he has feelings. And he's hurting. And I didn't realize that he was hurting. I didn't realize, etc., 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 etc. And that the enemy is just using him to get me to fail. And it's not Brother George's fault. And I shouldn't have lashed out at him. Then we go back and I say, Brother George, the other day, you know, me and you were talking and I just want you to know that I'm sorry for what I said. If I hurt you, I've asked God to forgive me, and I know God's forgive me, but if you would, could you forgive me, please? And then that person, if they're living their life right, is going to say, absolutely. We all make mistakes, brother. They stand up, they hug necks, high five. That's the Christian walk. That's what people have to see. That, I promise you, will change. Doing what we just enacted right there is able to change more lives than what I can preach in a sermon. I promise you it will. I promise you it will. I thank you guys tonight, amen, for being here. Does it, before I leave, amen, I, I just want to ask and, and we used to do this a lot, and I got more into I just, I stand up here and I rattle off, and I just can't help it. I get to talking about the Lord, and I can't shut up. Amen. <coughs> but you got any thoughts, any questions, comments over what we've talked about tonight?
pray that uh, uh, stay with me. Amen. I'm going to go to the Lord together in prayer. And as we dismiss tonight, uh, and I always want to ask if, if somebody's here and says, you know what, I, mean, I need prayer, I always want to give an opportunity to pray, uh, pray for you if you need prayer or, or desire prayer. Amen. Uh, anyone at all that needs prayer tonight before we dismiss. Praise God. As we, as we pray tonight, amen, uh, to just pray for God to, to use you. Just pray for God to, uh, to, to give you and to help you to, to, to be more aligned, amen, with this word. To walk this believer's walk. To be more Christ-like, amen, in our daily life with everything that we are, amen. And I promise you that as we pray this prayer, I promise you God's going to move. God's, gonna, God's waiting, praise God. God is waiting on people.